Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is the last lesson of module two. So it's part one, it's split into two uh, parts. Our district suggests to do it in two days. So uh, I could have probably fit this in one day. So the second part of this is uh, quite short. It's a lot shorter than this one. So don't forget all your lessons can be found at uh, mrmathblog.com. And then when you go there, make sure you click the Integrated Math 1 link at the top. Okay, so here we have some truth tables and compound statements. Probably you haven't seen these before. Well, you've seen compound statements before in a form. You just don't know this yet. So a compound statement is formed by combining two or more simple statements. So we're going to have two or more different kind of inequalities in this. So the statements could be true and they could be false also. So a compound statement that involves the word and... So you got to look for the word and is true when both the simple statements are true. So if one of them is false, then if it's an and statement, then the whole thing is false. A compound statement that involves the word or is true when anything is true. Either one of them is true or both of them are true. So here's a truth table right here. So we're going to complete the truth table right here. I think I slid it up. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead. So um, this, is, uh, our, this is our statement P right here, and this is our statement Q right here. And then it says, is P true in these statements? Is Q true? And then this says, is P and true, or Q true, okay? So a dog is a mammal. Well, that's true. And then uh, a dog is a mammal. Well, that's true. Hold on here, you guys. A dog is a fish. False, false. So we're going to put true, true, false, false going down there, okay? Red is a color. True. Red is not a color. Not true. So that's false. True, false, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and we, we want to say, uh, what, what happens for P and Q? So this is what truth tables do. Okay, so uh, when both of them are true, then P and Q is true. Okay, here's the rule right here, you guys. So a compound statement involving and is true when both simple statements are true. So they both have to be true to be true. So this is true. This one's false because that's false right there. This is false because that's false. And this one's definitely false right here, okay? So hold on to that. I know what you're thinking. Why are we doing this? These are just truth tables, you guys. So when you guys get to college, there's a class called Logic. I don't know, it's called Logic 101 when I was in college, and it's all about this stuff, and it's, it's, kind, of, um, it's kind of weird. Anyways, um, uh, so that's uh, when it involves and. Okay, let's do this again with an or one here. So this is the same kind of thing, but we're going to look at uh, P or Q. Okay, now P or Q, we just have to have one of them to be true, or both can be true. Okay, so is one an odd number true? So that's true. Is one an even number? That's false. That's false. Okay. All right. So let's go true, true, false, false. Okay. Two is an even number. True. Two is an odd number. False. Two is an even. True. Two is odd. False. So it's going to go uh, true, false, true, false. Okay. And then here's the rule for or. A compound statement involving or is true when either one or both of them are true. Okay, so as long as you see a true in it, then P or Q would be true. So if these two are, so it's going to be true, true, true. This is the only one that's false when they're both false right there. So P or Q, you just want to know is one of them true right there. Okay, you're going to be asked to fill in a truth table like that on your homework right there. And that's all that is. So P and Q uh, is true only when, um, uh, only when uh, both of them are true. Only when both P and Q are true. Okay, so... That's that one. Both P and Q are true. P or Q is true when, well, let's take a look at the, uh, our chart we did. Look, P or Q, here's P or Q, is true, 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 when either one of them or both of them were true, okay? They just both can't be false, all right? All right, so give two simple statements, P and Q, for which P and Q is false, and P or Q is true. Well, that's easy. We just got to make sure one of them is true and one of them is false, so... Here, I just made up this, you guys. Let P equal John is a girl's name, which is false for in the most cases. And then let Q equal rain comes from clouds. Well, that's true in the most cases. So here, uh, P and Q would be true, and P, uh, P or Q would be false right here. Okay? Uh, let's see. So... Uh, I'm sorry, I got it backwards. P and Q is false, and then P or Q is true, okay? Makes sense of that goofy stuff right there. So uh, just remember, you guys, that uh, P and Q is true. When both are true, they both have to be true. And when P or Q is true, it, anything has to be true, and you got a true statement right there. All right. All right, so let's, let's um, uh, take a look at some math inequalities here. So compound inequalities involving and looks for the intersection or the, or the overlapping regions from each graph. 
So let's just say we had uh, x is greater than 2 and, and there's the key pivot word right there, and x is less than 6. Okay, let's graph these separately right here. Okay, so here's x is greater than 2. It's an open circle because it's not greater than or equal to. Open circle and shaded to the right right there. Okay, as long as the variable is on the left-hand side, the inequality points in the direction we have to shade. So it's pointing that way. So we have to shade that way to the right of 2. And just recognize it's an open circle. Okay, here's x is less than 6. Open circle, less than, going that way right there. All right, and then so if I blended these together, we want to know where do the blue and red match and mix, you guys, to make us purple. They're going to make purple right there from starting here and ending right here. So they're both open circles right there because it's open there, it's open there. So when will they blend and make together? We want to know where the intersection is. It's right there. All right, so the final answer, the algebra answer, how we write it is we say here's X is this purple stuff. Um, negative 2 is on this side over here, 6 is on this side, and x is in between the two. So we'd write it like this. 2 is less than x, which is less than 6. Okay, see here's 2. It's less than all of this stuff, and this stuff is all less than this. So this is how we write our algebra answer with an AND statement. And our graph answers always look like this. Not always, but in this section it will always, okay? Same works for if you have less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. It's just got the closed circles right there, okay? So they just got the closed circles, which means we're including that. So it's got the equals bar on that same stuff. All right, so let's solve each compound inequality and graph the solution set. Okay, all right, so when it's written like this, you guys, this is always an and sort of statement. It's an and uh, setup right here. If your x stuff is in the middle and you got an inequality with a number over here, another inequality with a number over here, this is an and statement. So it's going to be a shading from this number all the way to this number and shaded in between the two, okay? So here, we're going to get rid of this 2. We want to get x by itself. I'm going to go minus 2. But I have to minus 2 from here and minus 2 from here. So we minus 2 in three places right there. Okay, so we get 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6. Okay, so it's going to be a closed circle on 2, a closed circle on 6 because of the equals bar, and it's going to be shaded in between the two. Okay, so here's the graph answer right there. Okay, let's try another one right here. Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and subtract 3, subtract 3, subtract 3 right here. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me take that back. All right, and then here we go. And uh, so negative 5 minus 3. Be careful, you guys. Negative 5 minus 3. Okay, quickly, what is that? Yes, negative 8. Good. And then over here, 9 minus 3 is 6. Okay, and then we're going to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Okay, and so we're going to get um, uh, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. All right, and then so let's go ahead and graph that guy. So it's a closed on negative 4, it's open on 3, and it's shaded in between the two. Okay, so there's our graph answer. Here's our algebra answer over here. All right. Okay, so uh, compound inequalities that involve or is the union of the combined graphs. So union means everything that's being graphed between the two. Okay, so for example, if we had x is less than 2, here's x is less than 2, the graph. Here's x is greater than or equal to 6, so closed circle going that way. And then if we blended these two, we're not looking for the intersection. That's on AND, on OR statements. We're looking for everything that's being graphed between the two. So it's to the left of 2, and we're not including that, so it's an open circle. It's to the right of 6, and we're including that, so it's a closed circle. And so here's our graph answer, and our OR statements are always written with the word OR. Okay, so our algebra answer is you say this side first is to the left, so that's less than. X is less than 2. This is to the right, so that's greater than, so we're including it, or, or x is greater than or equal to 6. Okay, so this is typically how you'll see problems on or statements. It'll say, like, it'll say two different inequalities with an or right in be between. So typically, or statements have a, uh, um, a number over here, and it goes that way, and a number over here to the right, and it goes that way. Typically, that's what or statements do. Okay, so here I'm going to go plus 4, plus 4, same with this one, plus 4, plus 4. And when we do that, uh, we get uh, x is greater than 5 or x is less than 1. Okay, so here's x is greater than 5 right here, shaded to the right, open circle. Here's x is less than 1, shaded to the left. 
And when we blend those two together, we get that graph answer, and then here's our algebra answer right there. Okay, so we always say this side first, okay, even though it was on the right hand side up here, since this is the left hand side of the graph, we say that first, x is less than 1, or x is greater than 5 right there, okay, what else do we have, okay, so we got some fractions and stuff, another or, okay, so typically or statements, our graph is going to be a number here, shaded that way, and then a number here shaded that way, okay? All right, so here we're going to go plus 2, plus 2. Here we're going to go minus 1, minus 1, okay? All right, so then uh, now what I'm going to do to get rid of this 5 in the denominator, I'm going to go times 5, and then over here times 5. Here we're going to go divide by 8, divide by 8, okay? All right, so um, then the 5s cancel, and we get x is less than or equal to negative 20, or x is greater than or equal to 5. 40 divided by 8 is 5. Okay, so we just got to change our numbering system on our number line. I think I went by 5s on our number line. Yeah, here's 0, so here's 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, greater than or equal to 5. Okay, right there, less than or equal to negative 20. And this was already in the correct order because this was the left-hand side. So there's our algebra answer, there's our graph answer right there. Okay, hanging in there, almost done. All right, this one's an and statement, you guys. When you have something in the middle and an inequality with a number on the left and an inequality with a number on the right, this is an and statement. And statements are typical graphs or a number here shaded to a number over here. Okay, ors go in opposite directions, but and goes in the middle. All right, so to get rid of this 4, we multiply everything by 4 times 4 times 4. And then these 4s are going to cancel. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. And then 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Okay, still have the x minus 12. So now we're going to go plus 12, plus 12, plus 12. All right, and that's going to get us, um, uh, there's our algebra answer right there. Open circle on negative 12, close circle on 4. Okay, and uh, there's our, our graph answer right there, okay? All right, I think that's it, you guys. If you're in my class, I would assign you that homework. And if you guys can, can you like this? And if you haven't subscribed yet to the YouTube channel, would you do that, please? Thanks. Take care.